Hey guys, today we are going to talk about the interesting topic of Alpha Investments, Rudy, and MTG Finance subreddit. Now, as many of you know, the subreddit is not a fan of his, and it's definitely not a fan of mine. So, let's talk about Rudy for a little bit in time. He's interesting, because before Rudy, there was just a domination, and a lot of these podcasts, article writers, content writers, YouTubers still exist, and they want to sell you a story. And the story is very interesting. It is, hey, you can make money from MTG Finance if you subscribe to our paywall. Hey, give me money to tell you how to make money. Now, I always felt that's kind of mm, interesting. And they have been email list with buyouts, and that's all the email list is good. And the content writers have went from quiet speculation to MTG price, back to somewhere else. So at the end of the day, the only people who make money from MTG Finance is the people behind the paywall who charge you a monthly fee because that's a guaranteed money. Nothing else in life is guaranteed in MTG Finance except your monthly subscription fee, which is charged all the time. So let's talk a little bit about why they don't like Rudy. So brave move, Rudy is hated in this sub. This is upvoted 25 times, which is a lot in this sub. You typically don't see anything uploaded more than, upvoted more than 20 times. Rudy's hated in this sub and gets downvoted every time. Yes, a sub about finance of a paying card game bans the one channel actually talking about it. We won't ban him as long as he doesn't break any rules. Whether or not I like him does not predicate a ban. Moderator, just because he shares a similar interest doesn't negate the fact that he's a... We'll talk about these three points a little later. I think they're jelly. This sounds like they're jelly, right? So here, Rudy comes from finance. And he's made money. He clearly has money. And he's done the one thing that these I've criticized over and over again that these people don't do. Show your collection. If you truly did a buyout and you have a camera, show me how many emotes you have on camera, live camera. You might are on YouTube video. I don't care. Show me how many file layers you have. Show me the collection. Otherwise, I don't think it's real. Because here you have a bunch of people saying that they're so good at MTG Finance. They bought all the JST Mind Sculptors. They bought all the Bloodbraid Elves. And they totally knew it would be unbanned. And they were amazing at this. Yet they never show it. These people who are so set on making you determine or making you believe that they're great at this and you should pay them money to teach you how to do it. They don't do the one thing that would prove that they're great at this, which is take a picture of all the moats, go on a video. Like what I find hilarious, and this is very funny, is when people who have, let's say, 100 moats or something and they can't even afford a camera. Like, okay, you don't have a smartphone. The smartphone is a potato camera. Like, okay, I mean, this is a little suspect, right? You can't take a picture of... Here is why they don't like him. He's a real deal. And I've been looking... For... And before him, there's just all these people who tell you they purchased a thousand Bloodbraid Elves, yet they will never snap a picture of it because they don't actually do it. You either have the Norwales or you do not. And the majority of these people do not. You either have the blood rate out or you do not. And I know what you're saying. You're saying, oh, well, these people are so busy and so, but they can keep posting and posting and chat. Like it takes less time to snap a picture and post it than it does for you to write a book on why Rudy sucks, right? Hey, and that is my biggest criticism about MTG Finance is it's so easy in hindsight to predict 
and be like, oh, well, I have 100 copies of Blood Raid Elf, and I have 1,000 copies of JC Mind Sculptor. No, you do not. But do I believe, if Rudy said it, I believe it because he'll show it. And that's the beauty of it. That is the beauty of it. You can go on my channel. I have trade binders. You can see my lilies and falias and my altered falias and my one-of-a-kind cards, which are altered by artists from all over. And you can see it. You can see I own the cards that people... So here is my... Let's move to YouTube a little bit. When people are making like decks and they're telling you how awesome this deck is and the deck's like $400 and they just took the deck list from like a tournament, a GP, they probably have never played the deck before because the deck is a thousand bucks or 800. Well, it's a lot. It's a little cheaper now. Let's say it's $600 now, but you don't actually own the cards and you never played the deck. Therefore, you're making a deck review on something that you don't have any interest in. It, that's why I don't do deck reviews. Anyone can do a deck review. You just take the list and then you just put some graphics and you explain how it works, but you've never played it and you don't own the deck. Hmm, interesting, right? So people are saying that uh, they're criticizing him. And some of the criticism, I guess, is relevant, but for the most part, I would rather have someone with legit skin in the game. And even if he's telling me, intentionally telling me misinformation, I at least know he's a real deal. That he has money in these cards. And I can make an inference based on this rather than listening to someone who I definitely know does not own the cards. That is my biggest pet peeve about MTG Finance. Everyone's a genius, right? Everyone owns a thousand cards of whatever has just been unbanned. Everyone owns beta cards, right? I mean, come on. You just find them on the ground. And when they do a quote buyout, none of them talk about how hard it is to buy a hundred copies of one card. Yes, you can buy Card Kingdom. Yes, you can buy Star City Games, but you're going to pay way more. The typical way to do it is just buy it from like 25, 40 different vendors. And, but that's hard because sometimes it gets lost in mail. It's, some of them are coming from Puerto Rico. Uh, some of them are coming from Canada. Like you're just buying the cheapest file as you can. And it's a long time. All of these like instant spikes, you're not going to get the cards. They're going to cancel on you. The only spike that actually has ever made sense to me is the one that takes a long time to go up in price because you can continue to buy it. You don't want the card, if you are so positive Filear is a $20 card, you don't want Filear to go up to $20 as soon as you buy it. four copies. You want to wait. You want her to stay at two. And even at four, it's acceptable to buy her. But once she hits 10, it's like, uh, no. So that is my takeaway is Rudy is a real deal. Uh, he has money. He has capital. You can't play in this game unless you have capital. That is fact. He can manipulate the markets, which is always fascinating when he does something like that. He has boxes upon boxes upon boxes, and I like it. I like his business model. It's very intelligent. Uh, he's minimizing overhead. I don't know if he has any employees. I didn't see any in his videos. So let's assume that he doesn't have employees. He doesn't have a judge. He doesn't have, he doesn't even have to do a background check because he has no people working for him. That's the model to go for if you really enjoy the game. And I don't think, I think here's the, here's the example I'm going to put for you. He can be doing something better to make more money. That's how I know he's a real deal. Most people in MTG finance, they may not be able to make more money than they currently make, uh, given their skill sets. So the way that they can elevate themselves is by making ridiculous claims of... They, it, it occurs to me that the majority of them do not understand how a buyout actually works because they've never done one before. It's not pretty. It's not like, oh, the card I'm going to buy out today and it spikes tomorrow. You're not getting any cards. You're going to get cancellation out of cancellation and maybe... 50% of them are going to send it to you. And by the time you get them, the spike's already done. 
shipping, right? That's, I mean, when they tell you what car to buy out, it's so ridiculous because they always want the spike in the next day or a week or something. And a lot of times you hear about this and then you listen to it and it's already, the card's already gone on price. It doesn't make sense to continue to buy at the elevated price when you know it's on its way down. That's why Filio is very unique. You had about two years to buy her at $4 or less. The majority of the time she was at $2. Now she's a $20 card. That is a good buyout target. Long period of time where you can buy, 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 buy. You can wait for shipments. Uh, people are going to send to you because the card hasn't like spiked up in price yet. The time to buy Filio is not when she goes from 8 to 20 because no one's going to ship them to you. This is just not. Or they're going to put a limit. You know, I mean, it's, it's very obvious. Like, I've had stores put limits on me. I don't appreciate that. Strike Zone Online has a limit where I can only buy four of a rare, I think, or four of a mythic, eight of a rare or something. And it's like, okay, no, more. I need to put more in my cart. And it won't let me do that. Um, so I have experiences like that because I have tried to do buyouts before, and it's been a lot of fun. And I think Rudy scares these people. Um, he scares MTG Finance because he has capital. The majority of them do not have the capital to move the markets like Rudy does. He's inspired me. I'm actually going to go in and buy some stuff. Um, so my business is okay. February is not the best month, but I guess we're going to call it a wash. Uh, March should be okay. April should be okay. Uh, obviously, I have store buying power now. So I can buy whatever I feel like. And actually, if I is in Modern Masters 25, which at this time of the video, I don't know. I hope she is. Because that would be the one card I would buy in. Very heavily. Anyway, bye guys.